right, so we have our Lifeline 0360 installed and it said that we could do it this way and it's really pretty. So it's gonna be able to go bulkhead right back into here and then that's gonna go down one for our fuel. The rest of them are gonna go up to the front off of the dash bar to point towards the feet of the driving and then two more that are gonna come out, one on this side and then the other on the fuel rail side. One will spray the turbo side and then the other side will spray the fuel side. The, Fuel lines, excuse me. Drill a nice little hole right here. Spray it towards the fuel rail. Drill a nice little hole over here. Spray it towards the turbo. All the hot stuff and flammable stuff. Mmm. That looks crispy back there. Yeah. It's gonna be good. And we got our seats in, so now I can actually do my harness bar eventually. I mean, no hurry to do it because it's really easy to get back and forth in there. So once we have all of the back completely buttoned up, then we'll put the seat in, mount the harness bar and weld that in. Until then though, we still have to do the search or the fuel tank and the battery box, which we have our little caps done for our pass-throughs. Now I should sand down that one, make it nice and smooth, and we'll be good to go to remove everything to build a battery box. You and know what else our... we can do today? What? We've done some tubes. Oh yeah, we can do the, uh, the heat. Yeah. So we are now working on our fire suppression system and Chris, I went to a basketball game last night so I left early and when I got back in Chris had the thing already starting to run and we decided that we don't want anything uh, in the way of our beautiful back cap area. So everything's going to be hidden, bulkheaded and real clean. So we're working on that right now. We're going to drill some holes in that pretty back plate right there. Yeah. And Lifeline gives you these sweet little bulkheads that you can run your lines through firewalls so you don't just have to drill a hole and worry about the lines rubbing on stuff and eventually bursting, which is not ideal because there's only one time you need a fire suppression system and when you need it, you better hope that thing works. So nice little double-sided push lock bulkhead. We have Frigga drill a couple holes right here and I should have enough room to run it down. Then it'll run down underneath here to put the fire suppression towards our fuel lid on our cell. And then there'll be another bulkhead down there that's gonna run it to the front of the car. And I actually already put our nozzles. Oh, you already got the nozzles? Here in. and here. Sick. Drilled those holes yesterday and got those guys mounted. So that was a real fun time because that side ended up being like four layers of metal. So I had to grind it down so the bulkhead could actually thread in, but you know. It's all good. It looks like you use a tape measure. Yeah, I measure. Yeah, okay. That's so how I look it over your shoulder. I'm like, so you better measure those. Oh yeah, no. Symmetry. It's about symmetry. So one, to spray on your fuel system, which can potentially catch on fire, which is usually what catches things on fire. And then one on the hot side where all of your turbo stuffs are going on, in case anything, piece of tire or something lands in there and it flashes over. Have your oil line burst. Yeah, you don't need those problems. Like, you'd be like Andrew Maurer and just, you know, have your oil line constantly leaking and just Catching on, on the downpipe? Yeah. yeah. We're like Joel, whereas, you know, old turbo blanket would always catch on fire. The old one. That's because old he one. didn't have Not a funk. That's because he didn't have a funk one. Yeah, he wasn't funking yet. Now he's all funked up. Look at this backside. It's right on the seat. Wow. Slight design change, and that's gonna go. Hey, this, it's literally a sauce. I said the same thing to Cricket, and I was like, I want you to know that this was your idea for the design before you get upset with me. Or it's that one symbol in, in uh, Japanese. It's Buddhist. It's Buddhist. It's the symbol for unity. Unity. U N I T Y. Before it was a rap song. Yeah. Is that what it means? Unity? Yeah, it means unity. <laughs> complete, the complete symbol. opposite in, uh, what, what year was that? We're gonna talk about in that. The late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, the complete time opposite. That I was born. The complete opposite, sometime yeah, when you were around born. around the time that I was born. So yeah, it actually, if you get the real, the real meaning of it. I mean, unity and it's Buddhist. Well, I assure you that was not the intention, okay? No, my intent was to make it look good without crossing lines. We crossed a few. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> battery box all done up now so the battery fits in there real nice like oh i found the washer you've been looking for is on top of the battery so we have this fits in here real nice we have it already all marked out inside there and we're going to take and weld two plates on sideways so the battery can't ship this way and we're making our own little post FD rule state that it has to be a 3 8 inch bolt two 3 8 inch bolts holding it down this is a 3 8 inch bolt with some DOM tubing. So we want it to actually sit next to the battery, this, and that's flat there, and this will go, pull down to that. Still pretty hot. 
but we're going to weld this in there as well so one on each side and then we're going to do our little plate here so it can't shift that way this will keep it from going back and forth and then also this is the right size that it doesn't cover up our sweet anti-gravity battery shout out to anti-gravity we wanted you boys to still be seen and we still have our little jump start button yeet almost there we're getting there we're getting close so just to weld another one of those together and we'll put them in there weld those in we can clamp down the battery and then you know we just need to get with our wire company can't say anything about them yet but we have a wire company that came on board with us and chris is very excited to be announced but in the meantime we're going to keep plugging away on this we have everything set underneath there and supposedly chris has been telling me this for four days now Wise fab's coming in today. Wise fab's coming in today. I can only relay what is told to me, but our rear wise fab is supposed to be here. They actually had to build the rear kit for us because we were using the divorce setup for the separate shock and spring. So once we get that, then this will be a roller. That means we can roll it and put it onto this lift where Cody's car is currently taking up space. But we're gonna put it on the lift. That way we can do our coolant tubes under the car. We can measure for our drive shaft. We can do all kinds of fun stuff that we can't do while it's on jacks. So we can do, it's just a lot more inconvenient. You can also weigh it. Yeah, we also and see how much this pig weighs. Cut With, a lot of fat off. Well, I mean, we also took the diff out and all that stuff, so that's kind of a, yeah. another variable. Thanks, Adam. You needed a spare, a spare. Those things are hard to come by, you know, right before your car. Full backlight thing. Backlight? Backlight. You can see us in like 6K, which is really scary. Chris keeps telling me I have a face for radio, and after seeing that 6K video last week, I believe him. Charge. What is that, thing. bro? That's threaded. A threaded rod. I have a fucking bruise on my ass. Attempted hand. murder. That was that was a fucking that was a plop. I've got smacked in the ass in a long time. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> that was really weird having it come out like. <laughs> All right. So what are you what are you doing with that? You, you want to show me the what the what the purpose of the clear tube is? To put fuel in. No, no. Show me like. On, on. Uh, show me on the vehicle where the tube goes. Don't on the dome. We don't really know yet. Well, what are we'll you do doing here? Back window. It's gonna go through that hole and it's gonna come up through here somewhere, and then mount up onto the window. I just find out how awesome the position of this came out to where I can pull my fuel pump assemblies out. It's almost like you measured take it. Take those screws out and then just pull the whole pump assembly out. So we did have to modify this because it's a little bit tall for what we wanted, but now we're sitting right where we want to be. It's gonna be glorious. So we're getting wheels on it to try and move it to the lift. Lift. We don't have tie rods in it, but that doesn't really matter. So we need to build transmission cross member. We need to run our coolant tubes underneath the car. We need to mount the electric water pump, run fuel lines, a whole bunch of stuff we got to do. And on jack stands was great for all the fabrication because we knew the chassis was sitting square. So we weren't worried about the chassis being tweaked while we were doing the fabrication. Now we're at the point where we need to have it up in the air. So now that it's a nice rigid girl with this fancy cage kits roll cage in it, now we can actually do some underbody cutting and chopping of the floorboards. Yeah, moving around more. Yeah. We had it all level and everything before we started chopping out stuff that was somewhat structural. Yeah. So now that the cage is installed, we can do whatever we want to it. We can pick the damn thing up by the roll cage shit. Yeah, I was telling you, we gotta just grab it with the forklift, put some straps around that bad boy and lift. Fork chain long. It's not really gonna help. So we can only pick it up from the side. That won't really get us where we want to go. I mean, realistically, we should probably just put this thing on dollies in the front after the wheels are on there instead of yeah, trying to steer because we don't have tie rods or a steering wheel in it. Just a steering shaft. Yeah, put the dollies and then on the back, just one jack? Yeah. I'm just going to ratchet strap to the rear, to the rear crash bar. Put the camera down, we need help. We need 
birthday singers. Set it right there. Let the people watch us struggle. Let the people watch us struggle. That's it. We get to struggle together as a team. Good spot. Smart bird. He goes to the same spot every time. Oh, there he goes. I'm trying to get a mock-up, make the middle piece, make the side pieces, and then just make pieces to connect it. And then we can decide if we want to bend it all or if we want to actually, you know, make it in one piece and weld it. We're going to make our plate, go up to there, go from here, up there, and down. That'll be good. And then from there, we'll know where we can make our lines for our fuel lines and our radiator lines. That's what we're going to do under here next after we do this. Cat does the same thing. It's like, oh look, new cardboard thing, sick, bed. You can literally put a piece of tape on the floor in the shape of a square and my cat will lay in it. So you guys just make everything out of cardboard, huh? That's the policy. It looks like the shape of the BMW one. Yeah, just a little backward. I almost used the aluminum one and just built brackets off of it onto here, but I didn't like the idea of doing that. This is cooler, way cooler. Yeah. How thick does the metal need to be? Yeah. We're gonna use quarter inch. Oh. I wouldn't use anything less than that, personally. Steel. Unless you reinforce it, yeah, with steel. You could do eighth inch plates and then have like reinforcements all over it, and that would be fine as well, but we're gonna use quarter inch just cause, you know, we have it. And I don't need the reinforcement. We like it like that. Yeah, so yeah, you can use eighth inch, nothing, nothing lighter than that. And even if you use eighth inch, I would double plate certain sections of it just so it has a little bit more rigid, rigidness to it. Rigidity. But rigidity, yeah. We're gonna build one though, it's gonna be easy. A lot less work than I thought it was going to be. It looked like it had to dive up more, but with those Delrin bushings, it doesn't really have much bend to it, so we'll be able to do it in our actual break, I think. Maybe. Here's some courtesy cuts. Uh, floppy boy. Floppy Made him Joe. extra floppy for you. Floppy Joe. Uh, Chris back on the wall there. Yeah, you know. Trying to do a little something. Stuff that nobody's going to see, he lets me go up. Yeah, it's under the car. They won't see it. I mean, they will if they ever go under the car. Hopefully it makes you look no good. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm going to go to California now. You have fun yeah, in California. Micah Diaz, our sweet boy for us. Yeah. Have, give Micah a big hug. We like the Micah. We like the Micah. Look. All right. Hold fast. Go in the hold me real fast. Yeah. Have fun. You too, buddy. You too. We're going to enjoy ourselves building race cars. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Au revoir. All right, so that's the end of the video. We're in California. Look, the LZ World Tour. If you guys are in California, make your way out here for a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and LZ World Tour.